So this is lecture five, uh, second one for the knee, and we'll be looking at knee function. Um, so chapter nine, and uh, pretty straightforward, but we're going to look at the uh, more ligamentous uh, structure and how those uh, ACL, PCL, and collateral ligaments are uh, helping out. So this is a knee. Um, typically look at the about 150 degrees, that's quite a bit, but about 120 degrees, 130 degrees of knee flexion and zero to a little bit of hyperextension past neutral five degrees. Um, yeah, I mean, that's about normal. Uh, if we were in class, we would show a bunch of people and maybe one person in class would have this, uh, they sometimes refer to it as double joints and have that hyperextension. Uh, happens in the elbow and happens in the knee. In the upper extremity, not such a big deal, but in the knee, it can be an issue because of the load bearing over time. Um, so this is what it looks like in real life, knee flexion, knee extension. And then uh, a lot of people don't realize that we do have uh, quite a bit of internal rotation and external rotation at the knee. So we have sagittal plane and frontal plane motion, but no um, frontal plane motion. So transverse and uh, sagittal. So like with the rest of the joints, um, we have tibia on femoral movement, and then we have femoral on tibia movement. And slightly different in terms of the mechanical responsibilities, but um, you know this is more like think a leg extension, leg curl machine, and this is more of a squat type activity. So that's the uh, femoral uh, flexion and extension in the sagittal plane. Here's the tibial rotation. Here's internal uh, knee rotation, and this is external. So toes turning out, toes turning in. That's the tibia moving on the femur, relative to the femur, and this is foot flat on the ground, and this is the femur moving relative to the tibia. And this is, the t we, see, we see quite a bit of this. This is a, a huge part of normal movement, closed chain, foot on the ground, and um, us moving relative to the, the static feet, right? I mean, that's our connection to the earth. We usually have at least one or two points of contact when we're doing athletic movements. And so um, we're not seeing this as much as we're seeing this type of motion. So uh, what's interesting is think is that um, because this condyle is so large and it does sit within that, um, the width of the condyle is actually longer than the path that is here. And um, you can see that the axis of rotation evolves or moves depending upon the position or how much flexion or extension the femur is in. Um, the next slide is going to show that uh, if you have a starting point here and you roll, you would actually roll off the edge. And so when you look here, this starting point here uh, is actually, if this were to roll a little bit, it would move. It would actually be right where my laser pointer is right there. But uh, it doesn't. It, there's actually, it's actually slid back a little bit. So when you look at um, knee movement particularly, there's rolling that's happening. And then there's this gliding that kind of pulls that back into place. It's like a reset type component. Um, so if you look here, if I'm going into flexion, if I were to continue on flexion, this would be right off the edge here. It would fall off the cliff, but it's not. As this rolls back, there's some sliding mechanism, some shearing force here that's pulling this that direction. This force, this gliding that's happening, is happening from the ligaments. And that's uh, part of our most of our conversation today. So you can see here, as this is, is going into flexion or extension, uh, depending upon which way it's going, these cruciate ligaments that put PCL and ACL, as this is rolling, um, this is being tugged forward. So if this is going into flexion, this uh, ACL is pulling this direction to kind of keep that forward, and then vice versa for extension. If this is rolling forward into extension, that's being pulled back by the PCL to, to see that to happen. My next slide here shows a video. Let me clear this out. So it's a movie within a movie here. Oops, let's see if I can get this to go. Here we go. So you can see as it as it as it wants to fall off the back, this ACL here, this is the anterior cruciate ligament is preventing it from falling backwards. So you'll see that again. So as it comes back, boom, it's pulling that forward. So it's sliding and keeping that 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 rotate that axis right there over the entire time. And same thing as it coming forward. As it's coming forward, it wants to go off the edge there, but that PCL is pulling that back. Let's look at that one more time. 
So that's knee flexion, that's the femur moving, and that this ACL here is pulling this forward so it's not coming off the back. And then as it's going forward, this PCL is pulling it back so it's not going off the front there. So that's a great, now this video is posted on Blackboard, you can take a look at it, but it's a great representation of how the cruciate ligaments are working to keep that femur stacked perfectly over the tibia at all times. This kind of shows the interlinking mechanism there. Let's see if this works here. So same video, just with this imposed uh, four bar structure here. And you can see the relationship of how these ligaments are working to keep this centered or balanced over the tibia. So this kind of kind of shows the tibia and femoral, femoral and tibia, how you're getting this rolling and sliding. Um, you're getting a little bit of reverse action when you're going, uh, when you're getting the tibia and femoral. Uh, so you're getting like, let's say, knee extension. You're rolling and sliding in the same direction. And, uh, and don't worry so much about these rolls and slides. It just kind of shows that there's a little bit of extra mechanism that's happening here. Now, because the medial condyle is larger, um, there's this mechanism called the screw home rotation that brings the tibia a little bit further so that it, uh, when you get go into full extension, um, it accommodates, uh, accommodates the, uh, the extra size that medial condyle has. So what happens is, so this is you looking front on, the patella is removed, and you're coming into terminal extension, so the leg's kicking out from you to the screen. There's a little bit of external rotation that occurs that locks out to allow that uh, that larger size of that condyle, the shape of that medial condyle here. So as this is coming forward, you kind of see that there's a little bit of extra rotation for that. Uh, so that means that when you when you go from full extension in your knee, um, there needs to be a little bit of an internal rotation unlocking in order to allow you to bend your knee. Um, and there's a popliteus muscle that does that, and when we talk about muscles next lecture, we'll get into that. But this mechanism is called the screw home rotation, and it happens in the last up 20 degrees of extension. Um, so there's approximately about 10 degrees of, of external rotation in order to lock it. And if you, if you take your leg right now, and you just, uh, if you're sitting in a chair, and, or even in bed, right, it doesn't have to be, but you just lock out your foot. If you lock out your knee, you'll notice that your foot turns out a little bit as you do that. So if you just keep your leg hanging from the side and you lock your knee out, there's a little bit of just that little bit of external rotation, just 5 to 10 degrees in order for that to happen. And if you have to keep your leg locked, in order for you to bend your knee, there's a little bit of internal rotation that needs to happen first to unlock the knee to keep the condyles uh, benefit. And that's called the screw home mechanism. So screw home mechanism or rotation is that little bit of external rotation during that terminal extension. And I have a video here that kind of shows that um, little bit of that lockout bang right there, that little bit of external rotation. It's a one second video on loop. All right, so um, we talked about the Q angle and this unhappy triad, and we'll talk more about that in this lecture here about this ACL and the injuries that happen. And, uh, ACL injuries are very, very common in athletes. Um, PCL injuries aren't as common. Uh, if you're an athlete and you get a PCL injury, you've you had a lot of trauma to the knee. A lot of the PCL injuries happen in automobile accidents. Um, remember, the PCL is keeping the tibia from moving posteriorly for, of the femur. And so what usually happens is people are in the passenger seat of a vehicle. They, have, they don't have their feet on the floor or it's a, it's a smaller car. They get in a car accident and they their shin bangs up against the uh, the um, the dashboard and their femur continues to go forward and that rips the PCL. ACLs happen the opposite direction. You usually get like a hyperextension injury. So what ends up happening is you get a uh, impact force coming from this direction that pushes this uh, femur back in this direction, which is the equivalent of that coming forward, and uh, that rips the ACL. But honestly, most of these are coming from lateral impacts, like we showed with the MCL, um, or landing on it. So here he's landing, it's coming forward, he's, the force, the gravity is pulling down this direction, and you can see it just break there, and this tissue here, this medial, this MCL, rips. 
and so this is referred to as the unhappy triad. So usually when you get this type of impact injury coming from uh, this direction, um, you're getting uh, this overstretch, this MCL, you're ripping the ACL, and you're tearing part of the medial meniscus. So this is, this is the typical three things that you're seeing uh, with these injuries. So there's your direction of force, there's your torn ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus. So yeah, so um, I'm looking here at the end of the slide. Uh, so make sure you're reviewing page 219 and 225. I'll hit back here a little bit and um, really just making sure that you're aware of how these um, collateral ligaments are holding the, um, the uh, knee together. So these varus and valgus forces, right? Valgus is bringing the knees together. So if the knees come in, let me see if I have a slide there. So uh, this is a right knee looking at anterior. If you have the knees coming in this way, if you have a valgus, if you have come valgus, so if both knees are coming in this direction, you're going to put strain on the LCL. And if you have a varus position, because you have too much air here, you have too much space, the knee's going to be this direction, you're going to be putting too much strain on the MCL. If you're looking from an anterior view, I'm sorry, a lateral view. So here's your lateral view here. Let me do another slide. Do, do, do. I should just do this, sorry. Mm -hmm. So there's your cruciate ligaments there. If um, So there's your, here's your PCL. It's coming from the posterior aspect of the tibia to the anterior, and then the ACL is coming from the anterior aspect. So it's making... It's called cruciate because it's making a cross, so it's crossing here and there. That's why it's called the cruciate ligament. But um, you know, if this is anchored this direction and you get an impact force here, that's going to push the tibia this direction. That's going. It, it 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 may end up ripping both of them, but the um, you know you're you're probably going to if you get if you go back far enough, but you're going to actually gonna create slack on the on the tendon here, but it's going to create tension there. And if you get an impact from behind this direction, right, which is the same as getting an impact from that direction, that's going to uh, stretch and eventually rip the ACL, right? So kind of understand those mechanisms of injuries there. Um, it should be teased out in your book, but um, I think it's pretty straightforward here that not understanding that the ligaments try to resist that, those tension, and understanding which forces are going to put uh, those, uh, those extra strains on those tissues. So again, review pages 219 to 225. They kind of go through the collateral ligaments and the uh, function that they have.